This is a news article where, um, or a, a video, probably from the Telegram, but it's a Twitter clip. I so I want to hear this. I mean, I'm vaguely aware of what it says, so I'm curious if it's clickbait or not. So this letter was from the council, and yeah. you got this on the 12th of January. You moved in in November, didn't you? Yeah. And, and, and you got this letter, and just, just spell out what this letter says. That letter says that they, because the property is derelict, that they can compulsory purchase it. If there's any repairs to be done in it, they could take it off the price of the property. Yeah. And these properties are for migrants of... It's what absolutely for. extraordinary, isn't it? And how did you feel when you got a letter? You moved into your new wonderful home, you settle down, law-abiding citizens, yeah. and you get a compulsory purchase order from the council accusing you of occupying a derelict home. How did you feel when you got this? After paying 200000 for it, we didn't feel very well. No, it must have been one hell of a shock, mustn't yeah. it? It's, it's for the immigrant and not the and indigenous then, population. Yeah. Well, veterans are sleeping rough. Yeah. 16,000 veterans. terrible are, weather. Absolutely. Um, they can't get put in hotels or on a bibby stock home. There is a daylight um, charity, daylight centre charity in, in, in Wellingborough, which looks after homeless people who are sleeping rough. And they spend £630 per annum per head. Illegal migrants get paid fifty thousand pounds. They get spent on them fifty thousand pounds per annum per head. And here we have the evidence of it in this letter. They wanted your lovely new home. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, so in summary, in case the British accents were too thick for you to make understanding heads or tails of what was being said, um the family moved into a new home. The council immediately declared it derelict and then said that they were going to force them to sell uh, to the council. If any repairs needed to be done, they would re remove the repair money from the amount that was being purchased. And then they uh, would use that home for housing uh, refugees. <laughs> so uh, these people who spent the money were out of luck uh, and would have to move again almost immediately after buying the home. This uh, actually, this reminds me of another suffer, suffer England segment. That's a pretty good helping of suffer, suffering in England. Um, but a, a person put out a statement. They're being sued by a familiar trans ogre, if I, if I understand correctly. And uh, they were court ordered to remove certain things from their website. This is Legal Gengar, who is in um, the UK. I don't, I don't want to make assumptions about who, what, when, where, or why, but um, I'm pretty sure that this is a familiar goblin in the UK, and I'm pretty sure, if I had to take a guess, I don't know for sure, the documents that this person posted about that familiar goblin in the UK may be convictions related to actual uh, uh, acts. So uh, they um, were court ordered in civil court where the proceedings were, were taking place to remove those uh, incriminating uh, public documents from the internet and then not repost them again. And then uh, from there, uh, these documents that were taken down ended up reposted to the Kiwi Farms as they do. So he says, on Saturday night, the police sought to arrest and question me for an alleged breach of a, the extremely limited undertakings I gave to the High Court earlier last week not to publish specific documents without permission. An unknown third party had complained that I had flouted the order of the High Court by reposting such content that I had removed from my article on my website on Kiwi Farms. A screenshot of that post was provided to them and it seems that there was sufficient to send officers out late Saturday night. I was not at home at the time and was not able to establish what exactly they wanted until the next day when I called them. I was told that it was alleged that I had under broken the undertaking. I asked for what evidence as to this allegation, i.e. what account had posted it, what they had actually posted, etc., and asserted that I hadn't done any of those things. 
Extremely reluctantly, they muttered the names of the Kiwi Farms account that had posted it, the account, the content, a name I shall not repeat here, and, re <laughs> and admitted that there was no other evidence to tie me to such account or the post in question. I pointed out... <laughs> Hold up. Let me see if I can acquiesce uh, what the name of this account is really quick. Let me see if I can just search it. Or I'm going to yell at someone and go search it for me. Um, I pointed out that, that anyone could have, and clearly did, copied the content prior to me taking it down, and I cannot be responsible for the acts of unknown third parties. And why would I be stupid enough to disobey a court order? In any event, I am not and never have been that account, not the least of which because of an extremely rude account name. They then confirmed that they were not looking to arrest or question me anymore in connection with the alleged breach and that they would take no further action. I understand that the first person to be involved in litigation where the police are mobilized for baseless or extremely weak allegations. It is worrying trend that I would intend to write about in my future article on the website. On my website. So this person was put under caution which is basically the Mirandizing in the UK. From what I understand, when the police caution somebody, um, they basically, the, the police caution, I'm going to look this up because I love how insidious it is. UK police caution notice. See if I can find this really quick. It's kind of confusing because... Um, Cautions are also the name that the uh, that the police in the UK give someone as like a fine. Like they don't call it a fine or something. They call it a police caution. So a caution is both like a warning they issue you and then also like a fine that they give you um, for, like to, to punish you for something. But um, it basically says like. Um, we are, we are trying, we're looking to arrest you. You don't have a right to an attorney. You can get one, I guess, if you really want to, but we're still going to interrogate you. Um, anything you say can and will be used against you, but also anything that you don't say can and will be used against you. If you refuse to talk to us, we'll make note that you're a naughty boy who, uh, doesn't like to speak to the police and that will be used against you at a later date. Like that's what they go out. It's like the exact opposite of the Miranda rights. It's like, it's not, you don't have a right to, uh, an attorney. You, you don't have a right to silence. If you say, if you refuse to talk to us, we'll make note that you're a naughty boy. If you try to speak to an attorney, we'll make note that you were a little bitch <laughs> that hid from us from under mommy's skirt it's like really crazy uh so i found this interesting this is like the third time that somebody in the uk has been like under caution because of kiwi farms post they didn't even make if you use the forum i beg of you please use a vpn molvad works fine um private internet access was also popular for a while but molvad has ipv6 and that's really big if you get a vpn I uh, get one with IPv6 Tor and Mulvad work fine for this pur purpose. British people need help, dude. It, it might be worthwhile to set up a charity just to get every not retard out of the UK. There must be only like a couple hundred not retarded people in the UK left. So it shouldn't be that hard to move them all to the US. The question is, where do we put them? I think they could do, they, they need that shitty weather. So I guess Washington. We can move all the British people to Seattle. And that might that might make it less shitty, if you can imagine that. No. Look, there's only a couple, I'm telling you, not the shitty ones. The good ones. Only the good ones. There's only a couple of them. Save Carolyn. <laughs> I think she would, from what I understand, Carolyn would want better weather. I think she'd move to Florida before she would move to, to Washington. I'm, I'm a fan of the gray weather myself. Apparently that's a contentious opinion. Everyone gets angry. and says, what? What? You can't look British weather. British weather is the worst. It's all gray and rainy. But that's, that's good, actually. That's, that's good, actually. White people are meant to have cold, gray, rainy climate. White people are immune to um, seasonal dis, uh, disaffectiveness disorder, the cold, gray, rainy climate uh, makes black people jump out of windows, but white people 